And Jack, let's talk about some of these rivalries in this new, new look Big 12. Oh, man, I'm excited. I, I think when I, when I was looking at this, so I was I was thinking on Friday when everything kind of officially, you know, was settled and the dust cleared. Um, BYU and Utah automatically, to number me, one. is number one. Absolutely Hands number down, one. number one. The amount of borderline hate in there and it's i don't beautiful. mean i don't mean borderline hate it's so beautiful like oh it's almost hate i mean like border it, it is hate and it's borderline bad yeah. <laughs> like i there's only one rivalry in the this new new big mm-hmm. 12 where i'm like yeah they might need to make sure that doesn't get ugly and that's Utah and BYU, which makes it the best rivalry yeah. in the conference. No, it really is. And I think it's going to be fun year in and year out. Now that you have, I mean, could you imagine a scenario where it's like a Saturday night game late in October or November and at the champ, like a spot for the Big 12 championships all the line and those two teams are going at it, dude. Like we've seen the atmosphere in Provo and I know Utah is lit too, but like, that is going to be so freaking fun. Oh, you're talking every dirty year. To me. Every year, that's going to be so fun. To me. God damn, that sounds. Oh, that sounds amazing. I, I love the idea of that. I love rivalries that have conference title implications. Yes, Baylor and TCU was at its best when it was. What, frankly, when you look back at 2014, it's mm-hmm. like eh, we got to share the Big Twelve title. We beat your ass. You know, stuff yeah. like that. Bob Bowlesby would say other. <laughs> Bob Bowlesby can go. That That is the reason I still do not like Bob Bowlesby, even though he's a nice dude and I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so two-faced. Um, but I don't know about you. There's one thing I feel like the Big 12 has gotten away from with rivalries that I would love it to get back to. What's that? Rivalry week. They don't have rivalry week game? No, they move this crap around through the year. I guess I've been watching too much SEC. I don't know. Yeah, y'all got to have some rivalry only week. freaking conference that actually does rivalry week. Yeah, you should. Everybody should. The Big Ten has a couple, but when I say a couple, I mean it's the game. Yeah. And then the game everyone forgets about, which I don't because it's the old oaken bucket and I love Purdue. Yeah. But, like, I, I there's no other game that comes to mind for me as, like, this is the last game of the season – Big Ten rivalry. Right. I'm struggling to think of ones that are just the ACC. Like, the SEC will do, has a couple with the ACC. Yeah, because yeah, you got Clemson is, is, and is South Georgia Carolina. Tech, Georgia, late Man, year. that ain't no not. rival. <laughs> yes, it is. Classically, it, it it's is. Late but lately, it's... When was the last time Georgia Tech even won? Was that with Calvin Johnson? <laughs> or I, don't, yeah, I don't know. But you, you see yeah, my no. point. A uh, guy who's already retired from the league for a while. Um but yeah, they've got they've got South Carolina and Clemson, but then they've got, you know, they've got Egg Bowl, they've got Iron Bowl, they've got they do it right. Yes. They freaking do it right. I want the Big Twelve to get back to that. I want the Big Twelve to be doing everything the weekend after Thanksgiving. I want I I, I just life doesn't feel right without it right. being like that. Well, I, I know I didn't realize how strong and how old this this rivalry was between Arizona and Arizona State. I think that will be a fun one as well, uh, and it's going to be cool to like get some insight on that and, and learn the history of it. I think one I'm looking forward to, and it's going to be Colorado and Kansas State. I feel like there's a lot of we just we've had people on from Colorado discussing the the, the hatred going back to the old Big Eight days. I feel like that's something that's going to be a lot of fun to keep an eye on. You had K State. Like, right, you lost – and I know they play uh, Missouri this year, but you don't have that – you lost that as an in-conference game. I think now that you get Colorado back, you had that with what you have with Kansas. That should be a fun one as well. Yeah. I I am a little interested in in the development of Kansas State, Kansas, the Sunflower Showdown. Yeah. Because I, my Kansas State friends, who – one of them, my friend's dad, he's he's been in Manhattan forever. Yeah. He went to Kansas State a long time ago. And like, so I, I asked him, I looked him in the eye and asked him like, Randy, is there fear isn't necessarily the right word, but like this is pretty much exactly what I said to him. Like, I don't think fear is the right word, but is there kind of a fear of Here comes Kansas. this becoming a rivalry? Yeah. Like, you know, the, the vitriol is there, the emotions there, the stakes were never there yeah. in football. 
they haven't been there for a long time. Is like, are y'all nervous that like Kansas is going to turn this into a rivalry in football? Because it's a big rivalry mm-hmm. in basketball. One that Kansas probably is, wouldn't say is big, but like it's huge for for Kansas State Wildcats when they knock off Kansas in mm-hmm. basketball. Is, is it going to become similar for Kansas in football? And that's one that I think will be interesting to see develop because if Leipold doesn't leave immediately, yeah. I can see that becoming a really interesting rivalry. I think it will. I mean, I think you're already seeing it. And, you know, I think within a couple of years, you might see Kansas sneak up and get them. Uh, But I think you have two excellent head coaches who understand and have everybody bought in. They're creating their own. Like, obviously, Kansas State had more of the culture there with Snyder and what he was able to do. But you're starting to see that build, and it's beautiful. I think it's great for Kansas and their fan base. Uh, It's awesome to see. But, like – Houston and UCF, they've already kind of had that going back and forth to the American. I think you could draw the correlations with the space cities. There's just so much yeah. fun there. I'm not necessarily saying that could be like a a rivalry where it gets nasty, but I think with the connections, they could do a lot of fun things around the fans, and I think that would be a cool thing to see uh, develop as well. I'm not a big fan of like manufactured rivalries, and obviously I'm not a part of either of those fan bases, so I can't quite speak to it from the outside it looks a little more manufactured i like the idea of this kind of like chip on the shoulder houston and any texas big 12 team that's going to be fun yeah that'll be very interesting specifically tech and baylor no offense to tcu but i don't think houston has as much of a chip on their shoulder towards tcu because they were more recently in Mm -hmm. the same position um as you know not being not being in the big 12 for a while and being being left out uh, of, of the Big 12 at the start. Um, so I think those will be interesting ones to watch. I think that – I pray to God Baylor and TCU – I pray to God Baylor can actually beat TCU one time here so we can start talking about it like it's an actual back-and-forth kind of rivalry mm-hmm. because I think that one, out of anything from the – I can't call it the original Big 12 – the established, the pre-established. The pre-established Big 12. If there is a single matchup from the pre-established Big 12 that I think has a shot at being the rival, like, not, one of the biggest rivalries to like, up there with the Holy War, I think it's the rivalry. I would say that. I just feel like TCU, the way they've kind of owned Baylor as of late, the way that they are able to, they're starting to recruit a little different and um, kind of take advantage of the situation. I think Baylor has some work to do there. It's not impossible. Um, but you see that in a lot of rivalries. I mean, a lot of rivalries get like that. They'll get one-sided. Uh, Baylor just needs to finally put Win. some things together. And, and, but I, I, right now, dude, and kind of the trajectory of each program, I, I think it's going to take a while. I think it's kind of you're starting to see more of a uh, – uh, a, a spike in the rivalry between Tech and Baylor, obviously because of the connections with the coaching staffs and and how some of that has been um, shots across the bow, the recruiting on the recruiting trail and stuff. I think that's one that you're going to see. But with me, it's like I think naturally when we look and it's probably just proximity and we we hear about Tech how like they've always been this we're alone, we're in the middle of the desert. Well, now you got a couple other desert schools. Are you going to see some of these type of rivalries spark up between them and Arizona or them and Arizona state. Like, would that be cool? Like, do you see any of that happening? I can definitely see either of those schools. I probably lean Arizona state just because I feel like tech is going to be like, y'all are in the desert too. Why are you looking down on us? Yeah. Cause I I think Arizona state will look down on Phoenix is a Phoenix is a little different than love it. Yeah. But like you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I think that I think that would be pretty interesting. Frankly, I do see Texas Tech as this like in the middle of nowhere, ready to fight with everyone. Like slap you with a tortilla, just slap go you at with it. a tortilla. <laughs> like what you think you're better than me? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and I do not mean that in like a derogatory way. I think that's great. I think that's a fun kind of personality for mm-hmm. a program that you can have in a conference. Now, I think I mean, and so them and them and Arizona State would be fun to watch. Like I yeah. feel like there's a lot of parallels in, in those two programs. Yeah, definitely. And. Uh, uh, kind of looking at those two programs, Arizona State and, and uh, Arizona, from what I've I've gleaned from Twitter and from fans and a little from the chat room even, 
that's a rivalry that's cooled off a little, but historically there is some real heat there. Mm. I believe it's one of the oldest rivalries out there. It is. Um, and hopefully joining a new conference together where they might be in a battle to prove themselves the better of the Arizona schools to their new conference can help kind of rekindle that fire. It could. I just feel like, and and we'll get into this next segment, but I feel like it's going to be, there's going to be a short window for that. Really? I feel like there's going to be a very short window for that. Is that something we have to, we'll get into that. Yeah. Can you give me a little bit more of a hint? I don't think Arizona state's going to be in the big 12 very long. At all. Oh boy. I don't. I, I, I love, I love takes that are out there. I love this. I don't. I, and, and, you know, I have no idea where you're getting that, but I cannot wait to hear it. Yeah. We can get into that next. We'll, we'll kind of look at the progression of the new Big 12. We'll see how the landscape of college football is changing and what the future is going to be here on the College Chaos Podcast. <laughs> 